okay record so anyway i'll i'll skip the big five let's actually go through uh, other experiments see one thing that before we starting uh, going into the other uh, experiments few things that needs to be kept in mind um, basically uh, what is going to uh, happen is uh, all the questions whatever the viva that is going to happen it is going to happen in and around these experiments so it is also been told during uh, our uh, the earlier session that the, we might really have to write the discussion part of these particular experiments and the the main part there is it is all about how we write it not really exactly the length of the content so you don't really have to go through lengthy introduction and all those stuff uh, giving lot of data no you don't really you are not expected to do it so they are more going to uh, concentrate on whether we know how to do it how to actually you know interpret it how to actually present that particular thing that those are the aspects which they might uh, be interested in knowing right so um uh, so things that uh, how i was actually thinking um, is like we can probably go through one by one experiment and then uh, identify mainly talk about what are the things that are important in and around those particular experiment okay so uh, there are five total uh, one is case study in those particular five uh, so there are three specific things in which big five is already i think uh, been uh, covered during the counseling related class so we'll start with the other experiments so let me go through life value inventory first okay um so uh, life value inventory it is like a i mean it's a test which is mainly to assess the values right so there are around 14 different value areas this particular life value inventory identifies and these particular 14 so so basically using this particular uh, test you are really identifying what values in those 14 are really of an interest i mean are are significant or basically those are the main influencing values as far as the person is concerned right things that we really require to uh, very much uh, know about this experiment is see all these 14 values are something that everybody does have in some quantities okay so here the way it is assessed is let's say you need to take a decision right so on a day to day let's say you we take lot of decisions so for example i am going to actually you know uh, go and listen to some lecture right so i am taking a decision whether i am going to go to that particular lecture and then or or not going right so how it happens now going to lecture means that means you are actually giving some importance to certain aspects of values maybe you want to achieve better hence you want to learn whatever that the other lecture is saying or else you might you know you might be interested in earning certain things hence if you learn you might actually think that you might get the money but at the same time if you are actually you know uh, more towards that oh yeah i need to actually take the responsibility of my kids at home i can't really leave those particular kids at home and go to that particular lecture so i might miss on the responsibility right so some people while taking the decision they might give more weight as responsibility some people might give more weight as to you know achievement so it is all depends on every for every person how we give weightage to these particular 14 values vary so life value inventory is all about your own value weightages it is not in comparison with others so is it clear on this particular point basically it is in comparison within yourself among these values which you value more which you don't value so it is not like okay yeah if, uh, i mean you are not comparing your values with other person it is not about how much uh, you give value to achievement when compared to your friend no that is not the case here it is not about comparing with the other people so it is about the weightages in which you actually you know give to these values when you are taking the decision right so purpose of this particular thing 
this is the so basically you are evaluating values that are guiding the behavior of a person and how they are going to take the decision that is the purpose of this particular test okay and this is developed by brown donny kelly craze in 1996 okay so where exactly it is used in general most of the tests are generally used in areas where like let's say you are counseling a person you want to understand their value system you are trying to actually recruit a person and you are trying to understand how he is going to make the decision work right so most of the cases it is like you are evaluating the person from the values point of view their decision making and other things are something that you want to understand that is when you are going to take this particular test right so now what is the value right so what the value is that the it's basically everybody has got that sense this is right this is wrong so there are certain basic principles right and we actually prioritize and we, we based on whatever the patterns that we have seen since childhood whether our you know parents taught it or whether we, we have seen in the society or whatever there are certain basic principles which are really guiding our behavior in terms of telling that this is right this is wrong okay yes if i do this it is unhealthy if i do this i can't you know earn money if i do this i can't really give 100 uh, percent to my responsibilities all these things are like this is this is what is value right it is it, it is like any other cognitive construct right and so and every individual and group as a group also there is certain values that come in for example at a country level there are certain values that actually get inducted at a you know community level at a you know region level a caste or religion everything actually contributes to some extent to these particular values so this is like it, it is in and obviously individual to individual there is a lot of difference even after having all these particular guiding things that are actually coming so that is what is value so how many such areas that this test really you know uh, I mean, these are relatively independent areas, what it actually says. So there are around 14 areas this value, you know, LBI test really covers. So these, these are the 14 areas which are there, right? So, so there might be question in terms of, okay, what, what are the value areas? So I, I mean, practically all the 14, replicating all the 14 and telling back might be difficult, but you can probably remember at least few of them to give those particular examples, right? If, if you are able to actually recognize all 14, well and good. Okay. <clears throat> so, so how it, this test really happens? So there are around 42 questions covering all these 14 areas. So each of these particular question does cover around you know, uh, three, three questions per each category, right? So, uh, I mean, there, there are three questions for each this value area. Way you answer really dictates the score of it, okay? So now the most, so there, there, there are actually descriptions in terms of what these particular value areas are. We'll go through that. So for example, what is achievement, right? So basically it is like, no, you are like challenging yourself to work hard and improve and achieve something. So that is exactly what achievement is. So most of the names here are pretty evident. Loyalty or family or group, right? It is very evident what it means. Belonging, right? So basically it is like you feel that you are accepted by others. You are not, you are not really, you know, getting a uh, feeling that, oh yeah, nobody likes me kind of a thing. So belongingness is like you, are, you think that others really like you or you feel that you are you are with others, right? The others really invite you. Um, so concern for the environment, how much you are like concerned about oh yeah, the environment related aspect. Concern about concern for others, how you feel, how you deal others. Creativity, financial prof prosperity, right? how much you value money, how much you value health, right? Humility, how humble you are, right? And independence. So how independent you are in taking your own decisions. Privacy. Right? How you feel, how important you feel to have that private time for yourself. Right? Responsibility. Right? How much you are dependable and trustworthy on all aspects, whether it comes to kids or family or uh, you know, work or whatever it is. Right? 
scientific understanding how much you give value to the scientific understanding i mean you you are not random right i mean you always give importance to yeah this is scientific and this is non scientific kind of a thing how much you value spirituality so these are the 14 areas that this test really evaluate and each of this area does have three three questions so total 42 questions are answered in the scale of like 0 to 4 right okay so any questions till now then we can actually go through uh, the you know how exactly this would be evaluated let me open the um you're able to see see my screen right let me open the practical document and we can go through the uh, So now I'm going to take through what is the procedure to actually do this particular thing, right? So let me just. Oops, sorry, not this one. Let me just. So how it is done, right? So every so there are around forty two questions that we talked about, right? So every question you are going to actually rate that particular question based on what exactly you believe about it. Okay. So let's take few questions and how how do you answer? Respecting the traditions of my family or group. right so you are going to actually rate whether if you believe that you are not going to actually care about the tradition and family you are going to say that almost never so sometimes you care you are going to mark it 3 almost always you care about it that is 5 right so how much you think that you give value to the family right that means you give you give respect to the traditions of my family so based on your belief you are going to rate this okay so one means you are never going to actually listen to it right so as it actually as your respect really increases you are going to actually make it one of this particular rating okay like that you are going to rate all 42 questions in 1 to 5 and for these each value area there is a question number that is marked for example question number 1 falls under area a question number 15 also falls under area a right so now you are going to calculate your score for each area right so for each area you are going to calculate the score so that means each area does have three questions you are going to add up all the numbers related to those areas now for you each area you got a score right for example in case of achievement i got 15 in case of belonging i got another 15 So in case of financial prosperity, I got twelve, right? Independence eleven, humility ten. So this is how the scores are. So now, what uh, finally you are going to do? So once you get the score for each individual area, you are going to add up all your scores. Okay, and you are going to divide by fourteen. That means you are taking the average of average score. per value area okay so listen the, listen to this particular aspect carefully so here you are actually checking your average score among these values so all your score only you are not comparing with anybody you are actually adding up and taking the average score and now you are taking the average score and comparing the areas among yourself so basically among your areas only you are checking 
So your average score here is 13.6, right? So my achievement score is 15. That means I give more value to achievement. So this is high as an interpretation. So if my individual area score is greater than the average score, then I will interpret it as high. If my area score is less than this average score, I'm going to rate it as low. If it matches, I'm going to rate it as average, right? So here, the simple thing that I did is, if it is 13, right, it is in decimals. If it is 13, then I rated those particular areas which are achieved, which are like 13 as average, right? And those, those areas which are below, are low, right? So below 13 are all low. 13 is average and above 13 are all high. So basically what I'm doing, I'm actually comparing each area with my average rating. And then interpreting accordingly, whether it is high or low. So what these scores really mean? What this score means is, you know, as a subject, here, the achievement area is high. So what it means is as a subject, I give very high importance to achievement part of it. As a belonging, I give very high value to the belonging. But when it comes to financial prosperity, I give low preference. So when I am taking a decision, if this particular area is in conflict with financial prosperity, Maybe I give lesser value to financial pro prosperity and give more weightage to the others, right? So it is about my own decision taking when I am coming to a situation. So that is how it is, okay? So unlike other experiments, you are not comparing with any industry baseline. You are only comparing, you know, at a, your own individual level. That is the most important aspect that you need to remember about this particular test, right? So. You understood how to interpret this course? So once you interpret this score, it is all about you writing about it. Yes, the subject has a score of 15, interpretation is high, that the subject is considered as high on achievement and he believes in challenging himself and works hard to improve, right? So similarly, when it comes to financial property, he gives a low importance to it. So what it means is subject has a lesser belief on the importance of making money and buying a property to be successful. Right. Similarly, health, if it is less, subject has a less belief on to be healthy and physically active. Subject has a, no, so it is all about in comparison with the other values. It is not about each individual value, right? I mean, maybe if you ask the subject that how important health is, as a simple value, you might say that I give very paramount importance to health. But when it comes to the conflict with the other values, when he's taking the decision, that is when he might actually rate health to the next you know, to a lower extent. So it is not about individually having this. It is, it is also about when you are taking a cumulative decision, how you are giving values, right? Any questions still now? So Praveen, okay. if my individual score is greater than the average, then I give importance to that yes. particular value, right? That's what yes. you said. Yes. Otherwise? If it is same, it is average. So basically, that is a, that is the average. And if it is lesser than that, you give low importance. Okay. So in this case, 13 is the average. So hence, for all the scores which are having 13, so whatever that you give as a value is an average value. So you would, like it's a balance, balanced, uh, you know, uh, weightage that you give. Any score which is less than 13, you call it as low. 12 is also low, 11 is low, 10 is low. Anything beyond 13, it is high. And in exam, uh, from examination point of view, probably they might give one value and ask us to... Uh, yes. No, yeah, like what do you think? Exactly, exactly. So they might actually say that this is your average. They might actually ask you, what is the procedure? How exactly you do it? Then you will have to probably explain. You take the, you calculate the individual scores. You cumulatively calculate the average and then you compare that particular value with the average value and then interpret. And they can ask, they can give that, okay, let's say your average value is 14. 
and uh, you got a 15 score how do you interpret right so so they can actually you know ask those particular things if the average value is 8 yeah if it is and your and your value is 9 then yes. is it still that you know I'm, you're giving importance yes exactly exactly okay. it is your own average value your own weightage so basically if you are you are comparing with your own average value that is the most important aspect here that you need to understand got it okay so that's about lvi any questions in lvi Okay, let's go to the next one. I think meeting might actually end uh, in seven minutes. Sir, what is the what is the full form? What is the thing? LBI means life value inventory. Ah, okay, thank you. And it is actually uh, developed by Brown and Kelly in nineteen ninety six. Forty two questions, fourteen value areas, and all those stuff. Right. I think if somebody asks, what does actually creativity as value means? You should be able to tell what is creativity but this thing is very easy if somebody asks that what this value area is and i think based on the name of the value area itself you can actually answer it open it. And read. yeah okay so okay so now uh, let's go to the next one um, so next one is conflict management style Right, so conflict management style is, uh, it's an experiment which actually uh, tells you which style of conflict management that you follow. So there are around five conflict management styles, which is collaborative style, competing style, avoiding style, accommodating style, and comprising style. Okay, we'll go through each one of those, what exactly this means, right? And every style is actually, you know, symbolically associated with some animal name as well. Um, so, uh, I'll probably tell you how, uh, I mean, uh, some easy way which I thought, uh, which you could actually, you know, easily associate with this particular animal. So, this is developed by Reginald Atkins. Okay. This so, what questionnaire, right? This questionnaire is developed by correct. Atkins. Correct. Okay. Correct. This test is developed by Atkins. Okay, so and uh, what exactly is the conflict? Um, I think most of us know what exactly the conflict is. Two people having different different motivations, and um, and the, somehow these motivations are not gelling together, so and they are trying to actually solve that, right? So that is what is the conflict. So why conflict management is important? So conflict management is very important because as a manager, let's say as a manager, if you don't know how to how to manage a conflict then your team is never convenient to get into a conflict right if they are sure that when there is a conflict somebody is able to deal with it then more likely people are open otherwise they are into their own shells right that is only one advantage there are multiple advantages depending on the situation right you might not be able to achieve the goal without managing the conflict you might not mean you might not be able to maintain the relationships Etc. Etc. So there are n number of uh, things which are like probably you know uh, which makes conflict management very important. So uh, so one example which I gave uh, which is very much related to industrial psychology is as a manager conflict management is very very critical uh, for a team to uh, you know uh, to resolve and move forward to take the decision right. Um, so but otherwise as well in the life conflict management is pretty important. I think people can give a number of examples. So I'm just moving forward. Okay, so as as we uh, as I told earlier, there are around there are five different management styles, conflict management styles. Okay, so um, so those five are collaborative style, competing style, avoiding style, accommodating style, and comp compromising style. Right, collaborating style. What it means is everybody is happy. So what it means is yes, there is a conflict, but we both together sat, collaborated, and found a solution which works for you and which works for me as well. So 
So both parties are happy, right? So that is what is collaborating style is. So this is actually symbolically associated with owl. Okay, so owl is the one which actually has the big guys and he is actually it is it is patient enough. Um, so it's like this this particular style requires a patient and eye for finding the solution. You should be patiently looking for the solution which actually suit suit for both the parties, right? So that is why maybe owl might have been selected here. Right, so problems are solved in ways which is optimum result. Both sides get what they want. Owls highly value their goals and relationships. So basically here, both parties are happy. So that means in the end of it, you have a healthy relationship. Okay. And here it is like collaborative working, right? So they see this conflict as an opportunity to solve the problem together and move forward with their goals. Right, so um, it means it's like, Yes, two people improve their relationship as well at the end of it because both are happy. But this is time consuming. It requires a lot of patience, energy. It's not easy to find a solution which works for both. Right? So that means you require that particular patience to deal with it. So what are the advantages of it? I think that there are obvious advantages for this particular style. So nothing to actually specify. The, um, the next one is competing style. Um, so competing style is about, I don't care about your goal. Let me actually be like a dictator. I'll dictate what to be done. You just follow. Yes, if there is a conflict, so be it. You just, you just deal with your part. I'm going to actually override you. I don't care about your goal. That is what is competing style. So here you are authoritarian. You are interested in your own goal and you are quick. You are not even attempting to actually find a solution to solve the conflict. You are just saying the other person and overriding them, right? Obviously, this particular style affects the relationships. So this is like shark. I'm going to eat, eat, eat all the small fish away. So whoever is big is just going to eat, eat that, right? So the competing style is actually, you know, shark style. Okay, and, but it is quick. So that is what is the competing style. So it, uh, right now I'm just, and 